all through the 19th century we were told that fats are bad that fats make us fat but in the last few decades the tables have turned suddenly sugar is the culprit but what changed how did sugar suddenly become the bad guy also what's the history of sugar how does it impact our body and more importantly how does it impact our mind and some say even our soul all this and more in today's episode of the whole truth academy sugar is bad at least that much we all seem to agree nowadays but it wasn't so a few decades ago through the late 1900s american brands and nutrition experts were trying to tell the world that sugar is actually great that it actually helps you under eat that it's a happy food and it's great for growing kids they even tried to shame mothers by telling them not to deprive their kids of sugar just because the mothers were cutting back can you believe that shit fats they said were the real culprit we were asked to stop having butter and oil and fatty foods and switch to lean meats to overcome heart disease and cardiac problems suddenly today the same experts are pinning all the blame on sugar and carbs in general many have in fact started praising the several benefits of fats now and many famous weight loss diets like keto are based on a fat rich diet how did this happen how did the tables turn on sugar after all it isn't something new right our diets have had sugar for ages the very first mentions of sugar can be found in 8th century bc chinese texts yet obesity has become a global pandemic only in the last few decades in fact global obesity has more than tripled since 1975 if sugar is so disastrous how did we not notice for more than 2000 years why didn't our ancestors have a obesity epidemic on their hands like we do today but i get ahead of myself first let's understand the biology of sugar what is sugar well sugar is a carbohydrate not a fat it makes you fat but it isn't a fat to elaborate the basic refined white table sugar that we all think of when we think sugar is a disaccharide called sucrose where saccharide means sugar and di means it's made of two kinds of sugar that's glucose plus fructose refined table sugar is 50% of each by the way any ingredient in your food that ends with os is a sugar so glucose fructose lactose which is the sugar from milk maltose dextrose all sugars maybe they should include overdose in that list too coming back to table sugar when we eat it the body breaks it down into its constituent glucose and fructose molecules glucose like a 90s sitcom is easily absorbed by all our cells it's a sugar our body is capable of producing itself too and it's our body's primary source of energy but this absorption of glucose into the cells needs regulation and that's the job of insulin a hormone produced in the pancreas that regulates blood glucose and decides how much each cell should get consume too much sugar overload your blood stream day in and day out with glucose and over time it breaks insulin's regulatory mechanism that is called diabetes fructose on the other hand doesn't naturally occur in our body and it can only be metabolized in the liver and again consume a lot of fructose and it overloads your liver an overloaded liver stops utilizing fructose for energy and starts storing it as fat so there too much glucose or too much fructose the results are disastrous and refined sugar has both but wait isn't fructose the sugar found in fruits so now are we saying that fruits are bad Haven't we been eating fruits since well Adam how can they be the cause for obesity first up yes fructose is a sugar found in fruits but that fructose is very different from the one in man made refined sugar consider this a 500 ml bottle of cola has about 55 grams of hfcs or high fructose corn syrup now 
HSCS is almost like sugar. It's 55% fructose and the rest is glucose. So that's about 30 grams of fructose and 25 grams of glucose in a bottle. Compare that to some of the most fructose dense fruits like bananas or apples. One apple is 10 grams fructose. One banana is 8 grams fructose. You'd need to have three to four apples to match just the fructose in a bottle of soda to say nothing of the 25 grams of glucose on top. This also takes us back to the question of serving sizes that we discussed in our previous video on nutrition tables. Why are these serving sizes different? If we can consume half a liter bottle of cola in one go, why aren't we able to eat five apples in one go? Well, we can't because apples and bananas are all fruits and they are nutrient dense foods. Unlike your cola, they aren't empty calories. They have fiber and minerals and so many other nutrients. They fill you up and they give you a feeling of satiety. And that's the reason why the obesity epidemic is such a recent phenomenon. Our ancestors weren't going around gulping down tons of sugar through colas and candies. They were eating apples and bananas, which made them feel full. So they couldn't overeat them. So that's the history and the biology of sugar. But the real game that sugar plays is with the mind. So let's discuss the psychology of sugar. You see, our hunter-gatherer ancestors didn't have ready access to sweet, energy-rich, simple carbs like sugar at the tip of their fingers. Which is to say that they couldn't order a cake or a chocolate from Swiggy whenever they wished. And they needed so much more energy to hunt or to avoid getting hunted. So their brains, which means our brains and our tongues, got wired to search for and crave for sugary foods because sugar meant energy and energy meant survival. That's why when your carb deprived ape brain sees sugar, it gets very happy, which in science talk is that it gets a dopamine hit. Yes, sugar creates the same brain response as dope. In fact, studies have found sugar to be as addictive as cocaine which, allow me to admit, is an exaggeration, but it's not entirely incorrect. Problem is, our food has evolved far faster than our bodies. Ever since we discovered how to make refined sugar, sugar became ubiquitous. We no longer need the kind of energy our forefathers needed, and yet we have thousand times easier access to sugar than they did. But it doesn't stop there. Over time, sugar starts affecting our very soul. Ever heard someone say, I have the soul of a fat woman or a fat man? What they're essentially saying is that the idea of happiness is now so intrinsically linked with something sweet for them that not only do sweets make them happy, but also vice versa. An absence of sweets make them sad. The medicine has become the disease. And here's the final stroke. Not only does sugar produce a dopamine hit, over time as your body and your insulin response system gets used to sugar, they start asking for more for the same reaction. So now one cookie doesn't cut it. You want two, then three for the same amount of happiness. Sound like an addiction now? So that's it. That's the tyranny of modern day sugar. Do hit subscribe if you like this video so you don't miss out on any future ones. For now though, allow me to recap. 1. Sugar isn't new. Refined, man-made sugar produced commercially and put into every possible food on the planet, that's new. And that's the reason behind the global obesity epidemic. 2. Sugar is made of glucose and fructose, but that doesn't mean that fructose is bad. What matters is the source. When fructose comes from fruits, it satiates you, doesn't make you crave for more and more. And finally, the biggest trick that sugar plays is with the mind. It creates a dopamine hit and over time, you crave more and more and more. Until finally, it seeps into your very soul and becomes intrinsically linked with the idea of happiness. Sugar really is the perfect storm and we are all in it. And on that macabre note, I take your leave for today. Ciao for now.